Do I make you hot? Well, there's only one way to find out for sure. A thermal camera. Meet the one from FLIR, an affordable thermal camera module that clips to the bottom of your smartphone. MassDrop is currently featuring the MSI GTX 1080 Armor 8GOC. Learn more at the link in the video description. Let's start with one of my biggest complaints about the FLIR One. In spite of the name, there are actually two of them. I mean, I understand the reason. One is for Apple devices with a lightning connector, and the other is for Android devices with a micro B USB connector. But if there was a way to equip the FLIR Two or whatever a successor ended up being called with swappable interfaces without compromising the admittedly very strong connectors, I think that would go a long way towards improving the versatility and future-proofness of these devices. An important consideration when you factor in that even an affordable mobile accessory version of FLIR's technology is going to run you 250 US dollars. Let's take a closer look then at the one. Both versions look almost the same and share the same internals and same basic mode of operation. So we'll be mostly treating them as one for the rest of the video here. The outer shell is plastic, but fairly confidence inspiring. It's not rated for water or dust resistance, but it seems like it could survive a drop or two. On the right is a status LED equipped power button, so you can tell when it's booting up versus fully powered on and ready to engage with the phone app. On the left is a battery charge indicator and a micro USB charging port. So yes, that means the FLIR One uses a 350 milliamp hour internal battery and does not charge off of the device it's attached to convenient in some ways, but kind of a drag in others. And finally at the front are the twin cameras, the stars of the show. I did say twin, but I should probably clarify that I mean fraternal twins in this case, because they are absolutely nothing alike. One of them is for capturing infrared light, a thermal camera, and the other is for capturing visible light, a, well, camera camera. The thermal camera uses FLIR's Lepton, an astonishingly small and low-cost long-wave infrared sensor to generate 80 by 60 pixel thermal images that are accurate to within 0.1 degrees Celsius from a range of minus 20 all the way up to 120 degrees. That's minus 4 to 248 Fahrenheit for our American viewers. The visible camera is less impressive. It's a 640 by 480, yeah, VGA affair, and that's pretty much all we know about it, other than the reason that the FLIR One even has one. Without getting too deep into this, resolution is a word that gets frequently misused. It means how much detail can be resolved from an image. So a film picture also has a resolution, even if you can't count the pixels. So let's fire up the app and just take a picture here. So the visible camera is actually where it seems like the advertised effective resolution of 160 by 120 comes from, thanks to a technique called MSX blending that, in a nutshell, captures a visible light picture, then strips out everything but textures and edges, and overlays the thermal image with the ability to peek behind it at the original normal capture as needed for easy diagnosis of whatever it is that you're looking at. An HVAC system, a problematic circuit, or that frickin' cat that's trying to avoid being taken to the vet. FLIR claims this technique allows the image to have five times the detail, a figure that they may have pulled out of their butts for all I can tell, but whether it's four or five or six times, it clearly works pretty darn well because the thermal image alone is much more difficult to read, especially for a layperson like me. And on top of still image capture, it actually supports video, panorama, and even time-lapse capture, which is actually a stroke of genius for diagnosing problems that might develop slowly or be related to the time of day. Which is cool, Linus, but uh, why should I care? What are these things even for, and why the hell do you need one? Well, for the first one, I don't know about you, but I care because they're just pretty freaking cool. As for practical uses, there are actually many. 
Thermal imagers, like so many things, were actually developed for military use, allowing personnel to detect heat signatures, engine exhaust, operating machinery, and even people during the Korean War. But today their applications range from medical use. Ever seen those cameras in arrivals at the international airport? They're checking to see if you have a fever and you're going to spread disease. To building optimization, to check the effectiveness of insulation, to law enforcement, night vision goggles anyone? To storm tracking, to home inspection, to nature watching, you name it. And what we've been enjoying is the way that suddenly a thermal camera allows us to validate manufacturer claims, like OnePlus's assertion that their quick charging technique keeps the phone running cooler than competing Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0, and Razer's claim that the new Blade 14 2016 edition runs much cooler than last year's model. Neat, right? Yeah, I guess, Linus, but uh, does this make the existence of higher-end ones like the FLIR E60, which is like a $7,000 camera, that you were showing off on Instagram a little while ago uh, superfluous? Great question, but no, I don't think so. The app is surprisingly stable and functional, but higher-end models have features that are a must for industrial use. Swappable batteries, SD recording, rugged housing, and the ability to operate without a phone attached, to name a few. And the FLIR 1 is not perfect. We ran into compatibility issues, for example, with the iPhone SE. And on the Android side of things, the onward march towards USB Type-C standardization reveals the problem with that future-proofness issue that I alluded to before. We actually tried using a Type-C to Micro-B adapter with the HTC 10, but we didn't have any luck getting it to work, though your mileage may vary. Bottom line, though, it's not perfect and hopefully resolution, durability, and compatibility rise as cost continues to lower. But if you need an affordable thermal camera for some reason, then the FLIR 1, which FLIR is leaving with us to enrich our future reviews, by the way, which is awesome, will likely be as welcome an addition to your diagnostic arsenal as it is to ours. Speaking of being a welcome addition to your arsenal, Tunnel Bear! And my notes say something about summer and boarding planes and cars and trains. Does anyone board a car? Anyway, the point is that Tunnel Bear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. With Tunnel Bear turned on, a couple of things happen. Number one is your connection is secured with AES 256-bit encryption, and two, your online activity is kept private from your internet provider and advertisers who are looking to harvest your data and sell you more like I don't know, aluminum spoons or whatever, some stupid thing that you've probably seen a banner for recently. Tunnel Bear has a top rated privacy policy and does not log your activity. And the best part is you can try it for absolutely free. It's like those food samples in the grocery store. It's like, wow, I can have 500 megabytes of these food samples, no credit card required. Then, if you decide you want an unlimited plan, they start at just a few bucks a month and you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash LTT, linked in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff that we featured at Amazon in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right to check out our latest video over on Channel Super Fun.